If you're engaged with live streaming culture on social media, then there's a really good chance that you've heard of the brand Fine Fine in regards to microphones. And yeah, it's Fine Fine. I checked. A few months ago, Fine Fine reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to do a review of the T732 microphone kit? And at first I said, no, because I was scared. I, I had made myself believe I had no business reviewing audio equipment. Thanks, high functioning anxiety. Later that night, same night that I said no to doing the video, I farted without shitting my pants. And I thought to myself, I can do anything. So as somebody that has spent over $1,200 on their primary audio chain for the gaming and streaming PC, you might ask me, Knackers, why did you spend $60 on a USB-based microphone kit? To which in return, I would say, I didn't. Because this video's fucking sponsored. So even though I already have a great audio setup already, I'm very interested in how a budget-minded USB microphone might fit for a newcomer on the scene, somebody who's just getting into content creation. So as you know, you can't just be a live streamer nowadays. You need to be a content creator, which means creating content for a bunch of different platforms. So how this mic would work in a Mac OS environment, in an iOS environment, iPad OS environment, those different factors were something that were important to me. Also, sometimes you just need a secondary mic setup to something that you already have. Maybe you have a second computer, a laptop, if you're working on the go. So that's kind of how I'm tackling this video. Not necessarily can this be the primary microphone for your stream, but can it be used for a supplementary device for any other deployments? So first, let's see what's in the box. An exceptionally long manual, a pop filter that can clamp right onto your arm, a seemingly secret note that I shouldn't be showing, but I must. I knew it. I knew it. Alrighty, on to the next thing. Your USB A to B cable, your adorable little mic stand for the desk, a slightly deformed pop filter with some goodies inside. Just a reminder, don't lose any parts. Additional suspension bands for the shock mount, just in case red isn't your thing. But it's so nice. A base clamp for the boom arm and the boom arm itself. It's got twisty thingies. And of course, the fine, fine microphone itself. And in the bottom of the box, we... So if you're gonna use this little tripod thingy, you're gonna need both these two little rings. You put the one ring first, and then you put the other ring, and you do a little screw diddly. And here's what it should look like. And a couple screwies from the bottom, and you got yourself a mic on a stand. Most microphone arms or shock mounts will come with this little adapter. Don't lose it. You'll never know when you'll need it again. Just a little more screwy business from the top, and you've got yourself a shock mount on a boom arm. Now just slide in the mic and push it until it's snug, and there we go. Oh, and if you're wondering how snug, pretty snug. If you wanna know if the mic comes unscrewed, it does. Here's the arm with the pop filter. And if you're curious about weight, the Fine Fine microphone comes in at around 248 grams. Unlike my Electro Voice RE320, which comes in at around 579 grams. For comparison, my iPhone 11 Pro Max with a small case comes in at about 264 grams, while these lovely Tatas come in at about 19 grams. And now that you've seen what's in the box, time to go over some specs. As far as the specifications for the Fine Fine T72, it is a condenser microphone. The polar pattern is cardioid. It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz and a bit depth of 16 bit and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. So as far as the features on the microphone go, there is no on or off button, no high pass filter, there's no gain knob, no LEDs or indicators of any kind. The mic plugs into the computer with the included six foot USB 2.0 A to B cable. There is no headphone jack, no direct monitoring, so using this mic as a playback device for your PC is not possible. Once you plug the microphone into the computer, you'll see it pop up as a recording device, and you're on your way. So when Fine Fine first reached out to me and I was considering doing the mic review, I was wondering who would this microphone be for and why, why should I be interested in it? So first of all, the price. Streaming veterans urge newbies to get into the hobby by spending as little money as possible. So obviously this is everybody's first thought. So second, the versatility of it being a USB-based device, which means you can pretty much use it anywhere. Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iPad OS, iOS. I don't have any Android devices, so I can't test, but I'm assuming because it's USB, it'll work just fine. But we only care about Apple devices, so. <laughs> so third, the goodies. Some of the extras that come with this microphone kit. 
Are they all the most super high quality? No, it's a $60 kit, but there might be some additional use cases for some of the other hardware. You never know. So with all that said, let's start doing some audio tests. You are now listening to the audio that is coming straight from the fine, fine microphone. There is no EQ, no compression, no gain boosting, no post-processing whatsoever. And if I was to be using this at my desk, this is exactly how I would have it set up. On a boom arm, a couple inches from my mouth at a 45 degree angle with the microphone's capsule pointed at a 45 degree angle to grangle <laughs> at a 45 degree angle as well. This being a condenser microphone, they obviously do really well uh, a little bit farther away from your mouth, which might be a little different to how you set up a dynamic microphone. So not only does this position of the microphone help with being able to see what's in front of you and not blocking your face if you have a camera that's head on, it also helps with plosives. So as you can see, if I turn directly towards the microphone and I start speaking, you notice that it gets a lot more full. It's very boomy, very bassy. You get a lot of the plosives when I'm doing P's and B's, right? It's not a great listening experience. So if you give yourself a little bit of space and you're at a 45 degree angle, it is a much more pleasant, much more even sound to listen to. I'm typically not somebody who has those massive pop filters that kind of hangs around the entire setup, so I usually just keep the mic off to the side. And as you can hear, it's not too bad. So what I want to do is take you over to the PC and kind of show you the general setup and a couple tips. You're not going to be able to see me very well, but that's okay. So the first thing you can check when you plug your microphone into your computer, Windows key I, type in audio, and then go to your sound settings. Go down here to input, and you can see that my computer is correctly identifying the Fine Fine microphone. I'm typically a person that uses the classic version of the sound panel, so I will open up the classic sound control panel and close this out. Now there's one quick tip slash trick that I wanna show you that you might not know about. So if I come down here to my USB mixer, I right click and I go to properties, and I go to levels, you can see that this is usually depicted by a percentage value. If you right click and you go to decibels, you can actually see how many decibels of gain you are adding or subtracting from the incoming audio signal. Now, for my mixer, you can see that if I go below the 50% mark, I'm actually subtracting the amount of gain that is incoming into my computer. And if I go above the 50% mark, I'm adding gain. Now, as opposed to when I come over to the Fine Fine microphone, right click, go to properties and go to levels. If I have the same percentage value selected and I go to decibels, you can see that even though I'm below the 50% mark, I'm still adding 6.5 decibels of gain. And that's because if I lower this all the way down, my voice has gotten quieter. So anytime that you're plugging in a USB audio interface with Windows 10, go into the levels in the microphone properties and check to see what you're dealing with. I typically tell people to start at the 40% mark and work their way up. So when I'm at 40%, you can see that my normal talking volume is anywhere in between negative 12 and negative 18. It's a little on the low side, so I'm gonna bump this up to 50. And now with my normal speaking voice, you see that oh, I'm hitting negative six a couple times, but I'm still kind of in the negative 12 range. So let's bump that up to 55. You know what, let's go to 60. And now in my normal speaking, I'm hitting that negative six. And in between that negative six, negative 12 range, that is a great range for just general speaking. And when you're, when you're in OBS, you want your main, your primary vocals to be hitting around that area. Now, something you always need to keep in mind with these USB microphones is they don't have a lot of headroom for when you're getting loud. I am most likely peaking that microphone. And that's where a lot of these more budget-minded microphones kind of fall short is the peaking. But if you're not somebody who screams a whole lot, or you're going to be using this in a much more balanced way where you're not going to be getting loud, this might work okay for you. So just to rapid fire through a couple tests, do you need a pop filter? You tell me, do I need a pop filter for all these popping I'm doing? I'm popping it like it's hot with big bodacious booties. Yeah, you need a pop filter. How does it do with off-axis rejection? The next thing is testing how well the shock mount does. So this is me lightly pounding on my desk. This is me if I'm Devin Nash, educational content. This is me tapping on the microphone. Grabbing the shock mount. Tapping on the arm. Moving the arm. 
the clamp could be a little better. <laughs> So the one thing you're always going to have to keep in mind, do I have an environment in order to support a condenser microphone? Do I have a well sound treated room? Do I have a lot of fans, a lot of background noise? The hardest part for people with condenser microphones, especially in smaller places, are going to be noise gating out all of the things that they don't want in their microphone chain. These are things that you should consider when you're buying a mic. So obviously you're hearing me on the mirrorless camera microphone and it's not great. What I want to see is does this microphone work with my iPhone? I'm going to open up this app called Ferrite. Right now I have the lightning camera adapter that has a lightning and a USB-A on the bottom of it. So I'm just going to take the other end of the Fi-Fi microphone and plug it directly into my phone. And look at that, detected it right away. So I also tested it with this USB-C docking station that I have for my iPad Pro, and it worked perfectly for that too. Unlike other USB audio interfaces into iOS, I didn't have to plug a power source into the adapter. The USB powered it just fine. Worked perfectly on the M1 Mac Mini as well. Find Find Microphone T732. Rotate the hook knob in the direction as shown. Pull out the center axis along the direction D. Insert the center shaft according... Shaft. Today's sponsor is StreamLadder. Just kidding. Okay, let's wrap this up. What do I like about this microphone? Number one, it's cheap. Comes with a whole kit for 50 bucks. You get a lot of extra goodies that you can use for other things. Again, using this as a stand right now, in case you want to mix it, mix it, mix it. The microphone is all metal. It's pretty heavy, feels decent. Cable going into the microphone is USB-B. It works with every single device that I have and it sounds good enough. Now, as far as what I don't like, it's cheap. The tension arms on this stand and the boom arm aren't very strong. I felt like I had to really overcompensate for the weight of the microphone. The boom arm clamp kept sliding off of my desk, but that might be because I'm using countertop that has sort of tapered edges. That could be my fault. And again, not really a con, but the fact that it's very lacking in features. No headphone, no monitoring, no mute button, those types of things. I would be recommending this microphone to brand new people who are getting out of the scene. People who are looking for a full kit, right? Just something to get them started that is decent. It is good enough. I would point them in this direction. Somebody who needs a budget setup for a secondary setup like me here. I'm going to be keeping this microphone plugged into my Mac mini. I haven't had a mic for my Mac mini yet. It's going to be great for discord calls. If I need to do the occasional little voiceover, it'll work fine. It'll work fine, fine. And of course, again, with this desk stand kind of being used as a Casey Neistat mount, uh, I could see myself using this in the car or on the go just to do little voice recordings here and there for whatever type of content I happen to be recording that day. This should be the microphone that you eventually upgrade from. This is a budget minded device. It is something that you should start with and then eventually move on from. You should know what you're getting into buying a $50 microphone kit. If you understand it for what it is, you can probably find some use. Thank you so much for hanging out for this microphone review. I hope you enjoyed it.